गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन चलो लेट्स बिगिन नाउ गुड इवनिंग एंड चिल वेदर फ्रॉम ऑल द वे फ्रॉम काठमांडू नेपाल टू ऑल लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस यू माय सेल्फ टू यू फर्स्ट आई एम सगीता वर्मा हु हैज कंप्लीटेड एमबीए इन बैंकिंग एंड फाइनेंस एंड इन द स्लाइड यू कैन सी माय वर्क एक्सपीरियंसेस I've worked with uh, advertising and marketing agency, banks, even a principal financial group company. Where I've worked with the British College, export and import company as an operational manager, and currently I'm working with the KDA organisation as DZM. Along with these experiences, I'm working with the Learnovit as freelancer. So you can. those who are new is an introduction of mine to you all those who have already joined my previous sessions it's just a review for them so today's topic of the session is employee counseling human resources counseling time to time is very crucial and very 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 important for all the organizations and the individual themselves so shall i begin guys please revert back shall i begin okay. so today's topic is employee counseling while going through employee counseling with the knowledge what you will accumulate during the sessions means after the sessions and during the sessions are the concepts of employee counseling why employee counseling is required what are the functions what are the different types of employee counseling modules what is the objective how the employee counseling process flows with the stages wise as per the industry as per the company or as per the sector wise then requirements for effective counseling what are the major requirements of a counselor which they should have in them before giving counseling to the subordinates or to the human resource of the company then samples how what are the form sample conclusion and question answer section so let's begin you can see in the picture counseling right always understand that counseling is a two way process a single it's not a single way process it's a two way process which means a counselor usually might be a subordinate who provides advice and assist assistance to his subordinates okay to various subordinates or experts sometimes company even hire the expert counselors for their human resources so there are many occasions when employee feels that the, there is a need of counseling for them it might be because of their personal problems or sometimes at the job requirement problems so when you go with this what you understand is it's an effect a process of guiding a subordinate to adjust better with his work environment and to understand others so that the dealing with them can be effective and purposeful employee counseling can be okay can be two one is formal another is informal majoritarily you will see there will be informal counseling in day to day activities like you can see that sub or higher superiors are counseling giving advices helping right even sharing and changing their work scenarios to by building a day to day work relationship 
with the managers, subordinates, colleagues, or department wise. So this is an informal counseling is every time there in every day-to-day -day activities we'll find it out. But formal counseling is actually a planned and a systematic program of advising and assisting employees by their subordinates or by hiring professional or expert counselors. It depends whether there is a requirement of uh, expert wants to hire or the superior can do it. And why we think that uh, employee counseling is, is so much helpful. It's helpful in strengthening and what is he strengthening? Okay, strengthening superior subordinates relationship. When there is a counseling from superior to juniors or the subordinates, what happens? There is a bond is developed, and that bond slowly and gradually goes on strengthening. You become comfortable to ask. The communication process begins. Okay, so it improves the communication and helps employees recognize their strength, weakness, and potential. Don't think that counseling is just done to overcome some of the problems. It even sometimes makes you to realize your strength, weakness, and what is your potential to do the work. So counseling also helps employees to prepare the action plans for their own development. When counseling is done, even they, at the back of their brain, they keep on planning and preparing for their own development. And like uh, you can say that uh, counseling always majorly plays two types of things. Okay, one is curative and one is preventing. Curative in what? In your performance and preventive in your performance only. So involves assisting the employee to understand their weakness, their performance and factors contributing to it. Contribution of his own strength and weakness is one thing. Okay, and assisting him to identify the extent to which the employee can influence the outcome of his work. So you can see the picture is a uh, therapy. Therapy is like you hire an expert and you literally go with the different communication therapies. You keep on advising. You change work scenarios for them to be adaptable. You share your providence. You share your experience, like majorly you will find that superiors keeps on sharing their experiences with the juniors so that they can grasp some of the points, a guidance is given, and even they given helping hand. So it's very important that counseling, while counseling or going through the counseling of an employee, the identification of development of organization and employ themselves is done in a very systematic manner. So you can say that counseling, if you will ask in a general concept, counseling is a process of advising a person to enable to understand their emotional problems. But when it is, when it comes to the employee counseling, it comes with all those factors whether that is emotional factor, personal problems, or even it is a job-related problem. So what did you understand with this? Workplace counseling is very important because if a mental health of an employee is disbalanced, it affects both. It affects employees. It affects the organization. At the end of the day, what matters is organizational goal is goal matters along with employees enhancement matters. So this is the basic concepts of counseling. So where there comes advising, changes, helping, sharing, guidance, therapy. Even let's take an example of our daily day, day to day life in our personal life. See our parents, they keep on advising us, right? that when we they keep on sharing their experiences life experiences with us when we try to do something and we are unable to do that they put their helping hand in it and what therapies they listen to us sometimes they do in order to make us correct they even scold us but we should not take that in a negative way it's for our building blocks 
when our communication keeps on increasing, effective communication keeps on increasing, what happens? The barriers of getting the emotional blockage gets out of the our exposure. And we always think that, yes, we are on a, on a zoom of counseling. So we do self-counseling also. You might have noticed sometimes when you're doing at a work something and it gets a messy, little messy, but what do you do? Come on, yeah, you can do it. You know how to do it. So you are doing self-counseling also. So counseling is at every step of our life, even that is personal or professional. In home, we keep on getting informal counseling from our parents, from our seniors, like brothers, sisters, even sometimes of our relatives, right? So that is there. And formal is they plan. Those who have a little bit of psychological problem, that is just, they go through the counseling session. That is another counseling. When it comes to organizational counseling, it plays a vital role for the organization because their HR human resources should always be at the level of their mental health correctness. So am I clear to the concept of uh, counseling to everyone? Guys, can you hear me? Am I audible? Okay, now can I go to the next slide? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So why need for employee counseling? See, at the workplace, counseling plays different ways. What is that? The issue of your personal life affect your work life. It is where when you are personally, you are like uh, somewhere disturbed, some trauma is going to you that affects to your work life also because you are not never focused you're always distracted out of the session you are you are always outreach of the meetings and presentations and you are not able to grasp anything or you are not able to correctly doing do the things so at that time your superior sometimes keeps you separately and asks is there any problem to you you seems out to be lost they keep on like that is a they keep on asking us and we sometimes, if the communication graphs is not there, we are comfortable with them, we share with them, right? So we get an advice from them. Then another is helps employees easily adapt the change in the workplace. What happens, you uh, might have noticed sometimes the, some of the companies, the rules and regulations, work uh, infrastructures, they keep on changing and even you find yourself uncomfortable those things starts affecting you and that also hampers your work then mental health improves mental health of the troubled person leaves problems aside when entering the workplace suppose you have some mental problem mental issues you come at the work you make others also disturbed so at that time if the expert counselor is needed they are hired for you or your superiors keeps on guiding you. Then the most valuable asset to an organization is its human resources, right? So they are equal to, you can say, a gold or diamond for the organization. If an organization values the human resources of their of their, their industry, their sector, you will find that every quarterly they do the sessions of counseling, which is... Uh, these days called as EAP, Employee Adaptations, uh, Performance Planning. Then it comes to the physical, mental, emotional, and social well-being makes a perfect employee. When you are physically fit, mentally fit, emotionally fit, and you are socially well-being fit, what happens that affects to the organization and organization's physical, mental, emotional, and social well-being also affects to the employees. So it's both way. And then it is a source of organizational change. Obviously, in, in, a, in a group, if you find a for team, you are a team leader and you have 20 members. in. So every individual is different. Every individual's perception is different. Every individual's... Uh, 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 way of uh, 
projecting themselves is different, right? So what happens sometimes a little bit of collision comes over there, and you have to deal that thing either with being a team leader, you counsel them, you advise them, or you make them to talk with your senior, or if it is required, certain processes gone is made through the organization in order to keep every team member of that team in an aligned way so these these are basically six there are major there are more so can i move this slide yes ma'am okay so you can see in this picture that when the everything is proper what happens either the employees are happy content motivated feels good and even they are project that thing on their your outcome of their work also how why does you think that uh, employees gets uh, the requirement of uh, like uh, counseling unrealistic targets sometimes company to the marketing team mostly what happens is they give you unrealistic targets that even makes you burdened out excessive workload absenteeism and late coming when a person is mental health is not proper physically unfit what happens employees keeps on being absent or they starts coming late to the company and their work is never up to date lack of awareness of the policies and procedures performance keeps on decreasing declining right and then you you will even find them sleeping on the desk and career problems they keep on so you need to identify that these these human needs and counseling now my employee needs and counseling so what happens even they ignore the responsibility they do not take the accountability of their work and the team spirit is zero out there interpersonal relation with superior and subordinates is completely disturbed like they they know how to brush each each other on in front of everyone so that is also a factor that a person your human your resource is in the need of counseling and even family problems sometimes family problems makes them suffer go with the uh, they are not actually to the work so many things comes even a conflict okay whether that conflict is personal or professional that shows off like uh, that shows in a way of the attitudes feelings then even perceptions what happens they they go with the mental disorder mental disorder in the way emotional balance there was no requirement to shout and they suddenly start shouting there was no requirement of uh, putting your work uh, to another one or a blame to an another person of not completing the task they start doing it so balance between work and the personal life in the employees and the organization direct affects to the organizational goal now what it there are major things like
Freud's uh, behavioral changes, professional changes, personal changes, not deeply, but yes, up to the label where your limit goes off and you try to make them correct. So am I clear with the concept of employee counseling and the need for the employees counseling? Is there any query? Okay, shall I move to the next slide? See, why, what are the functions of employee counseling? How does it work? First, let's understand the employee life cycle. What does employee life cycle? It always revolves to the company itself and they start uh, assuming, start doing so many things to be over there. What they want to do, they, they keep on making them enthusiastic. They feel that, yes, uh, my employer, my superior defines me attractive in the attractive in the sense of doing the work, right? They always uh, say, okay, you start it off like I am recognized. Then the development in the work, development in the position, development in the team, they keep on and they keep on seeking all those things. Then man is performance. They are very good. They manage their work performance and everything. They are always engaged. This is the, these are the things which an employee seeks from the superior, right? Engage and motivates me. If I'm wrong somewhere, they correct me. They engage me and they make me motivated to do the work. If I, if I say also that I can't do, they make them make me understand. Yes, they keep on giving me the motivation and make increasing out my gut feelings to complete the work. And they recall. They give the recognition. Yes, particular person has done this. And at the end of the cycle, when employee life cycle tries to, they always wish that my superiors, my company, the organization which, which I'm leaving, they value the work which I've done for them. And they give me a very proper farewell. That farewell combines financial planning for them and the work planning for them. So, a cycle of employees always surround in in the revolution of the organization, in the revolution of the superiors and other colleagues, right? So this is a life cycle of an employee. Now, when what are the functions of employee counseling? You go with the there are many sectors because of these problems, right? You need to make an employee to be out of these. You don't want your employees to be on a traumatic events you want to make them solve their relationship issues very properly then their physical health issues the changes personal stresses out emotional health prevent work relationship phobias yes yeah, some 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 of the employees you can find out the phobia of uh, like you know they try to work when there is a lunch break or there is a tea break. That's a phobia of them. That uh, during the working time they'll keep on doing pick up and then when it's lunch time, oh, oh, wait, 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 I can't go. I'll take a lunch afterwards. That's also a kind of phobia to them. And sometimes they keep on uh, working and they hide it. And at the end of the time, they keep on having a hesitation of not bringing out their work. Sometimes in family issues, financial problems, and work stress. Right. So. To deal with all these things, what a proper counselor can do has to give the advice instead of imposing, just giving advices, give advice like a child gives. A child says that yes and no. If the advice is taken, be happy. If the advice is not taken, just forget it out. But try to advise them when it is related to their emotional issues and problems which are hampering your organizational status also. So these things have to be dealt. 
and always keep your employees on under your ds events like providing the courage to the individual that don't worry go ahead you you well well you can make a good progress though you know that that is was not up to the expectation but you try to motivate in to them in order to make them understand that to themselves that they come out with their weakness and they starts to believe to the superior so a way of providing courage to an individual to deal with the problems and develop confidence you should always think that your employees always on a confidence instead of being an under confidence then even you know that uh, a counseling has to like facilitate both upward and downward communication it provides an opportunity to employee to express his feeling to counselor and counselor tries to understand the feelings of the particular employee and interpret it logically with the statement of the feelings so a counselor has to have a very proper way then make them to under, uh, release their work stress and personal stress make give them clarified thinking when when you are blocked with the mental blocks or you are like you are having a random rational thoughts what happens it does not let you to bring out the performance which you are supposed to give at the work so a counselor has to identify that also and make their employees to be very clarified with the thinkings and if possible give them the orientation plans orientation plans means like uh, you can always uh, with the concept of going through the workshops you can arrange and you can make a that works go with the counseling way of process in every quarterly with the department wise or sector sector wise or the team leaders and the superior wise it depends as per your organization or industry some of the industry they literally go with the works up every month which might not be possible with the multinational sometimes right or you can say that uh, they find it little bit of hectic so you try to dis- divide it in like in a year you give try to give your employees those who require and those who do not require still you make a common works up related with the counseling and you involve your employees in that so when you counsel what happens is like you a counselor always need to have like uh, documents wise very very related with the employees like what are their work behavior what is spoiling their performance and you should be like objectively fairly and equitable with every employees so there are certain things which keeps on going so concern of employee counseling is to deal with the traumatic events relationship issues physical health change change might be because of the department change or senior change or colleagues change so sometimes that even affects the employees then personal stress emotional health work relationships phobias family issues financial problems work stress a counselor always has to understand an organization should keep a keen eye on the counselor also and the employees also in order to if they want to retain the good employees in them and do not want to change the rotation of the employees am i clear to this much to you guys revert me back okay so tell me one thing suppose you are a team leader of a com- of your team and you have all together five or six members in your team and you know that every member is good at their specific task which is given to them but something is there in an employee which is not coming up to the result so being a team leader how you'll deal with it how you'll deal with it come on guys 
if you are unable to speak up you can even write it out no problem with that okay there is one question with the uh, bina matthew right to what extent uh, to extent is like you should know the limit whether the person is uh, comfortable to share or not personal issues means to that issue only which affects to the work environment it also even is with the uh, you can see the cordial relation between the superior and the team members if you two are cordial and you can keep us his or her secret with you and you will help or guide to solve out that problem then it is okay but you lessen them and you then then you just start flattering to your team members then that is a bad effect of going to be at your work right so you should know limit is very important and limit is always set by two ways okay a counselor and a person who is being under the counseling whether a helping hand and a person who is taking a help it is totally dependent on both of them so a limit is always decided in between them only okay bina am i clear to you thank you so much so even who is going to answer my question seems out no one guys are you understanding or you are just like uh, okay then so can i move to the next slide now now let's go with the types of employee counseling there is one very famous uh, writer you can say or a, a person named keith davis according to him employee counseling is divided into three perspective ways depending upon the extent of direction provided by the counselor okay one is directive another is non directive and cooperative so directive is like you can see in the picture here's the emotional problem decides what the employee should do motivate them to do the action and counselor plays the role of an advisor over it in directive it mean to understand is in this form of counseling the counselor listens to an employee's emotional difficulty decides with him what can be done and then motivates him to do it so the employee receives advice and reassurance his emotional feeling is released and his thinking is clarified so the counselor enthuses the employee to take a workable course of action am i clear with you the directive one here what happens a counselor listens to an employee's emotional difficulty then decides with him what can be done and then motivates him to do the action along with employee receives the advice and reassurance in this employee receives a reassurance and advice from the employee but all the action plan is on employee himself thus the employer emphasizes the employees to take a workable action course of action counselor is not deciding on behalf of a employee employee is motivated to take a decision over here so that is this one is directive counseling when it comes to non directive you can see a position of direct counseling client oriented process lets the counselor to understand his or her problem let the counselor to decide on what he should do in directive no in in non directive what happens it's this form of counseling is also called as client centered counseling due to the focus of the counselor rather than on the counselee 
right? It involves skillfully listening and inducing the employee to describe his emotional problem so that, so that the counselor can understand them and a certain possible course of action. What happens over here is totally <coughs> opposite to directive ones. So the counselor should be a very good listener, has to listen with empathy and respect without interrupting the employee. Respect the feelings of employee. He's, he knows that the employee himself or herself is best qualified to solve his, his own problem. Therefore, counselor allows the employees to talk about anything which may even seem to be irrelevant. Non-directive counseling is democratic but more time consuming. Directive is not consuming, but non-directive is time consuming. Now, third one is cooperative counseling. So it is like integration of directive and non-directive. When both gets in a combined form, when you are getting the counseling of both directive and non-directive, that comes with the cooperative. So it is neither <coughs> entirely counselor-centered nor entirely counselor centered Rather, it requires both of them to come forward with their varied knowledge, non prospectively to resolve the employee's problem in a cooperative manner. So something between directive and non-directive where practical applicable is more. So such counseling requires some amount of training and time to practice. So the cooperative counselor provides the employee his own knowledge and insight and discusses the situation from a broad organizational perspective. Has to be have an appropriate practicing manager to help resolve day-to-day -day emotional problem of their employees. So what you understand is when in a directive lessons hears out your problems, makes you to help, helps you to decide and even motivates you to take the actions, right? In non-directive, opposite to the directive, right? <coughs> opposite to be directive means it's completely client oriented. You are free to take your own decision because what a counselor thinks is you are much more prominent in that. When it comes to the cooperative, both sits both share their knowledge with each other and they reach to one particular step and that is taken so if you if you, you are asked for the differentiation there are majorly 10 to 11 differentiation of directive and non-directive but we go with the six of them directive is economical non-directive is time consuming because over there whether the subject matter is irrelevant or irrelevant the Employee keeps on blabbering. You have to listen it. Then emphasis on the problem and emphasis on the individual. In the directive, problem is given more priority, whereas in the non-directive, person is given priority. So emphasis on the intellectual aspect. And in non-directive, it is rather to the intellectual, it is rather to the emotional aspect. In directive, methodology is very direct and persuasive. And in non-directive, it's completely indirect, you can say. It's not mine also, not yours also. Okay, I'm giving you the advice. You take it, you don't take it. You, you are much more prominent in it. You deal with it. So that type of things. In directives, the problem is immediately solved. Whereas in non-directive, you take a lot of the time to have an analysis. And a counselor analyzes employees and even employee sometimes analyzes the person who is counseling so the problems of adjustment may take care of it right then uses psychological assessment data and non-directive psychological may not use as it is said that it might not be relevant to the topic or the subject matter or the problem matter but it's still, still they sit and talk about it so Particularly if you go with the employee counseling, three are majorly taken. There are many, but these three are major. Am I clear to this one? I hope I am not uh, rushing out. Guys, can I go to the next slide? Yes, ma'am. 
Now, what is the objective of employee counseling? What is the HR's role in counseling? You should be like understand or identify the person who needs a supervisor's advice, guidance, helping, or therapy. Like HR discusses the issue with the relevant superior and continuously asks for feedback. Being an HR, your role should be these in the counseling concept. You should be able to discuss and agree a plan of action with supervisor, schedule and joint conducting the counseling session. Joint conducting means here those who need the counseling has to be present and those who do not require but are interested to take part can take it. So such type of schedule should be done. Conclude the counseling session with warning if required. Sometimes even warning is given, given during the counseling session. Follow up the action plan and feedback to the supervisors and monitor development. After every counseling session, you monitor the behavioral aspect, the work aspect, the technical aspect of the employee. And what are the benefits? What happens when a, when a proper counseling is given to your employee? So certain benefits comes out. What is that? You will find that decreases the cost related to turnover, that is absenteeism number will decrease. Improvement in employee performance, increase in productivity, manage behavioral problems brought about by organizational change, helps in superior decision making, assist in understanding the situation more objectively, facilitates to look at the situation with a new perspective, and even it motivates to search for alternate solution to the problem. Those who are, were going through the counseling session sometimes becomes uh, uh, building regimes for the newcomers in order to help them to motivate the alternate way of solving the problems. In this, anything to ask? <coughs> Fine. Okay, let's go to the next slide then. Now, in the counseling process, there are four steps which majorly go with the counseling process. And in an employee, some organization, they wind up in three process or three major steps or some goes with the four. Like first one is identify the need. You have to understand and identify which employee requires it. That is also known as preparation stage. In, in this stage, you need to establish support or prepare a base for communication because it generates the necessary confidence in the subordinates and assures him of the counselor's genuine interest in helping him. Right? Then comes with the another one, intermediate stage, that is prepare for counseling, intermediate stage. Once the support is established, the counselor seeks more information which is required for the person and it helps them gradually to understand the strength and weakness and the potential of the employee. Because at, during the counseling session, a counselor always makes, tries to make realization of the strength and weakness and potential of an employee to himself or herself, right? So that is another which is intermediate. Third is conduct the session. Over here it is in a very segregation way. Some with the workshop, some with the helping hand. So this stage is known as helping stage. So here the counselor assists the subordinates in identifying the alternative solution to the problem. That is the pros and cons of each alternative are evaluated and the best course of action is selected. So over here during the sessions you organize in workshop a practical session you go with the separate one-to-one -one, uh, session and you understand them and you give the proper counseling to them then the fourth step is in the in few of the organization fourth step is followed that that is follow-up you just don't leave the employees like that session is done and you'll not bother it's not done the person or the HR keeps on uh, keeps an eye on it, monitoring it, and follow-ups. So, any problem, any mental issues? Are you okay? Are you liking the involvement?
comment anything please come up if you need some help please come up so these are the follow up things and what are the like counseling styles in an organization evaluative the hr keeps on evaluating their human resources right the hr manager hr assistants they keeps on evaluating their hr the resources of the organization then probing sometimes the sometimes you will find that employee is too disturbed and is not able to work and you know that if the frustration which is going inside does not come out the person is not going to work so what you knowingly unknowingly or purposefully you provoke them and you make their internal grudges to come out and let the motion on be on a proper way so probing and then supportives you stand with the your employee your human resources sometimes against the team members against the superiors sometimes even against the companies in order to with the proper one okay if it is a logical ethical you stand with them then interpretative you what sometimes uh, they are so frustrated they are so disturbed so stressed out that they are not able to vocal out so you become their vocal and you speak on their behalf then reflective you start the counselor start showing them the hr even even hr or the superior can do that and starts reflecting them if you do this this is going to be happen like this and you are going to be in a bigger trouble so it's better you watch out so that is also a way of counseling and we keep on getting these uh, counseling styles mostly in a very informal way in our day to day activities okay i is this okay with uh, everyone are you clear with the counseling process and the styles is there any query <coughs> sorry yeah if if you like uh, you you find out that your your team member is going on any sort of problem if the comfort zone is there if the communication is very good and the bond is very good you can clearly ask the person separately sometimes they do not open up in a group but uh, when you go with the separate or you go with the uh, tea catch up or uh, lunch gathering you ask them and they uh, open it up so during that time also you are counseling and you are understanding the person can i go to the next slide now <coughs> sorry so what who has to have a very good skill the counseling person the the one who is giving counseling has to have these skills first is active listening and empathy you have to be very active in patiently you have to listen to the person and you need to so not do not so sympathy so empathy on them respect their feelings emotions views tolerant they are sometimes in relevant activities or in relevant dialogues irrelevant in words also sometimes is very important to tolerate then self awareness you be self aware and you evaluate them you should be very balanced and you should know your strength then direction you should be able to show them proper directions it's according to their work profiles and seniority you need to have it so these seven activities of communication you can say counseling skill gets inherent in you when you builds up a very good communication skill also so it's very important for a person who is counseling and do not take counseling like uh, what is not counseling advising done by the counselor means they sometimes they keep on forcing your forcefully they advise that is not counseling okay like our parents or our teachers sometimes you know, if you do this you do this means you do this that, that is not a counseling okay do not take it in that way then psychotherapy mental issues solving out is also not a counseling in, to the employee okay those sort of 
if you find any employees mentally to the position where psychotherapy is needed what do you do you kick them out some of the times organization kick them out in a very prominent way okay it's not in by insulting them but in a very prominent way they do it then solving all life's problem is not a counseling okay being in an organization an hr or a counselor will always not solve your life problems you need to understand that that is not a counseling okay so you know even in the process of counseling six stages are there where you after completing the counseling process what happens is you your relationship builds up you starts the self assessment and diagnosis you start formulations of counseling goal you know yes i took these three sessions and this has taken place you start solving your problems by yourself without taking help of any third person you stop your termination you stop your uh, follow up with them but what you do you do self follow instead of following up you start doing self follow and then you do the research and evaluate your work your personal life your emotional attributes by yourself these are after the counseling process are done to an employee and when that counseling is taken positively by an employee so various employee counseling processes are there like even sometimes just sit with your employee and talk to them focus on their behavior enlist the employee's assistance establish a means of monitoring emphasize the consequences and offer encouragement so a normal hr person should be able to understand these six things to evaluate whether the resource of the organization human resource of the organization needs the counseling or not so these basic comes out with that then factors affecting organizational counseling before that let me uh, tell you there's a difference between coaching and counseling okay coaching is used when teaching a new job skill okay counseling is used when an employee has a conflict with peer problems in coaching an employee is new to the group or the department whereas in counseling persistence performance problem exists a person was giving consistent good uh, performance all of a sudden something happened and the performance is not coming out so start doing the counseling to them an employee needs preparation for more challenging environments an employee has job related behavior problem in counseling then the counseling is required an employee needs to develop self confidence in the coaching process self confidence is boosted up and in counseling needs to test the setting priorities of the work related and factors affecting organizational counseling you can see types of problem attitudes of frust- frustrated persons types or nature of the industry willingness of counselor so there are altogether 19 to 20 things because of which in the organization counseling session to the employee becomes very important right, which you need to identify so you can see when an hr goes identifies the person who needs the employee who needs the counseling they provide the form to them and they that has to be followed completely <coughs> employees full name job title location work experience employees and different questionnaires are there which an employee fills up and then hr sits and analyzes it and talks to them face to face or in a group and then a report is made for the employee whose whose counseling is done so these are the sample formats before winding up in the summary in the conclusion what you are understood today is employee counseling is the process of guiding and assisting employee in improving their attitudes behaviors and performance at the workplace conflicts frustrations and stress creates the need for employee counseling 
advice, reassurance, communication, release of tension, clarified thinking, reorientation are the different functions which makes you to understand that your employee is in a very tremendous seek of counseling. Types, directive, non-directive and cooperative. So understanding of self-behavior, environment and interpersonal effectiveness are the main objective of employee counseling. There are majorly three steps in the process, preparation, intermediate, and helping. So desire to improve dialogue, mutual trust, right attitudes, efforts, and right focus are the requirements of effective counseling. And these counseling should be able to make a person to improve self-improvement Continuous dialogue with the superiors, uh, seniors, juniors, and even the mutual trust between the organization and employee, subordinates and seniors, counselor and counselee is developed, right attitude is developed up, mutual efforts and right focus is been made. So all these are done during the sessions. In context with this, I'll show you a small video over here which will make you understand the concepts of EAP, that is employee adaptation changes, or you can say a counseling. These days, my God. Give me a minute, guys. My slide is just moving off. I'll stop this once and then I'll share the next window with you all. Why it is said that mental health is also important in every aspect of your work or personal life. See this uh, short video. I hope is this is the video can you guys see the video? Yes, Are you guys able to see the video? Okay, see. Most of us only ever share the good things. We don't like to share how we really feel. 
Every morning when I wake up, negative thoughts stream through my head. Getting out of bed and pretending not to use all the energy I have. As the day goes on, negative thoughts turn from a stream into a The water rushes through my head so loudly it's hard to concentrate in lessons. And some days it's so bad it feels like a waterfall that's trying to pull me over the edge. Everything is so overwhelming. I didn't think my friends would understand if I told them how down I was feeling. But when Sasha opened up to me about how stressed she was feeling, I told her. I wasn't sure how to bring up how I'd been feeling, so I started by saying that I didn't feel like myself. Just her listening made me feel like she understood. She told me some things that had helped her, so I tried them too. But it didn't make much of a difference. Even when I tried to be around my friends, I felt alone. The things I used to enjoy weren't fun anymore. I was really worried about Andre and not sure what to do. He was quiet and wasn't hanging out with us like he used to. So I asked our head of year for some advice. He suggested I get Andre to speak to him since his negative feelings weren't going away. I didn't want to speak to our head of year, but I also didn't want to keep feeling so down, so I went. He said that sometimes we have overwhelming feelings that can be more intense than our everyday feelings. These feelings hang around for a long time and change the way we feel, think and behave. They can stop us doing what we want to in life. That's what I was going through. He also said that if we're physically unwell, we people know we ask for help. It should be no different with mental health. Sometimes our overwhelming feelings are brought on because of things in our life. Sometimes they happen for no reason at all. After hearing this, I felt much less alone and it felt good to talk. Scientists have found exercise can help when you're feeling low. So our head of year encouraged me to sign up to the school football club, which Sasha was already in. I still have days when the river is there. But now I'm beginning to understand my mental health. I'm learning how to cope. Our head of year reminded me that my friends, family, teachers and lots of others at school are there to help just as much as he is. I had no idea that people around me could be so understanding. And while it's not always easy to talk about my mental health, the person I'm talking to might be able to help. If you don't feel like talking, that's fine. You could try writing, sports, reading, art, music, playing with your pet, whatever makes you feel better. If you're the person someone talks to when they're struggling, just listen with no pressure or judgments. You don't have to have the answer. If you feel unsure about anything, you can speak to a trusted adult. Talking about mental health doesn't have to be difficult. After all, it's something we all have. 